Hey everybody, Sam here and Angela and welcome to our channel. Here where we live in East Tennessee, we don't necessarily have hardcore winters. What winter is for us is the season of mud. And with the season of mud means that we have a muddy mess on our back porch. So what we have for you today is a fun, easy DIY project to address that problem. But it all starts off with a little bit of instructions from you to me on guidance for the project. Let's go. Here we are on the back deck and we have a problem with boots out here. As you can see, we have just a pile of muddy old boots that I don't want to bring into the house, but we don't really have anywhere else to put them. And then they end up out here on the deck wet and then who wants to wear wet boots? So I'm gonna give Sam some ideas about how I want it off the ground, really accessible, but out of the way. So we can just hop out the door and grab them or drop them off as we go in. So let's see what he can come up with. 28, the max, 44, 25, 5, 5. So center to center, I mean a four inch would be fine, but if we want to be dead, four and a half. Four. Four and a quarter. Four and a half, four and a quarter, four inch. <laughs> okay, so it could be really close. I will say three inch. I have my whiteboard of ideas, measurements, and otherwise what I'm going to do. So I started off here at the left, measuring our deck railing, drawing out the design to fix it in my head. We got two by fours top and bottom, one by balusters. I measure my total height that I have to work with. And down here, I give myself my available width and the baluster spacing. All the things I'm gonna need when I go to my workshop to not have to come back and forth, back and forth. Here on the right are the first two ideas I had. First one was to put a, like a large board against the balusters, angle some dowels coming out at an angle and make it two levels. That was not bad. I then kind of kicked around doing a sharper L like straight up and down, not too bad, still a little complicated. The final idea, idea number three, is both the simplest and the one that's gonna give us the vertical boot holder post that we want. It's gonna be some simple boards with one inch dowel put in there, and so that's what we're going with, idea number three. Now it's time to get out of this freezing cold weather, go to the workshop and start making some sawdust and some fancy pants boot holder board thingies. Welcome to the workshop and welcome to Sam's Catastrophe of a messy shop. I gotta spend a little bit of time getting some stuff moved out of the way, organized, give myself room to work, and get some stuff together. So, let me snap my magical fingers and get this place clean. Man, that's Angela that has the magical fingers. I wish I had those magic snap fingers because honestly, it's been a couple hours later. That's all right though, the shop is presentable enough. I got my materials in here and ready to start building this project. For this project, I scrounged around and I had some two by fours and two by threes on hand, standard dimensional framing lumber. And then I had some one inch diameter walnut hardwood dowels. I'm gonna use these to make the boot holder. It's pretty standard stuff minus the walnut dowels, but otherwise you can find this stuff at any hardware store. First step is to go ahead and cut these to my lengths. I've pre-designed, pre-measured, and scribbled on paper that I'm gonna make this one 38 and a quarter inches wide as far as the two by four and two by three. And then the dowels are gonna be about 12 inches in length. If my numbers are correct, this should give me a holder that is wide enough to hold four pairs of shoes or boots and give us plenty of storage, at least to start with, to get things cleaned up. So we'll go ahead and jump over to the miter saw here, cut the two by four, two by three, and all the dowels to their length.
all of that and i never once realized my shop vac was not on dust collection was not on on that one so I'll go ahead and clean up our mess now at least All right, I've got a two by three here in my hand. This is one of the ones that I cut. I'm going to divide this up equally into eight, rather nine parts. And at the intersections of those parts, I'm gonna mark it for drilling a circle to then mount eight dowels. That'll hold four pairs of shoes. So let's go ahead and get my tape measure out, get some precision understanding of math, figure it out and divide this thing up. Then we'll take it over to the drill press and drill it out. So I've got a pretty neat tool here I want to show you. It's called a Craig Multimark. It's basically a ruler that you can slide in and out, tighten down this brass fitting, and allow you to mark things, measure, and use them that way. I'm going to use this to measure the width of a two by three, which is two and a half inches. I'm going to move it back to an inch and a quarter overhang. Tighten this down. And now I know all I have to do is butt this up to either side and be able to quickly Give myself a mark so I know right there is dead center. That's where I'm drilling my dowel. This is one of those tools I've had for a while. When I first saw it, I thought, oh, pretty cool. I'll probably pick that up. Maybe it'll be handy. And I love it. It is absolutely a very, very cool and handy tool. It saves a lot of trouble, a lot of hassle. And honestly, if I'm able to do this while talking to the camera, still get accurate measurements, it's pretty amazing. Just saying. And just like that, I have our eight crosshairs marked on this two by three. Now we get to grab a one inch drill bit, head over to the drill press and drill these out. That place is a mess. Maybe easier to move the whole tool over. I think it will. I think it's gonna be easier to move the tool because that's in a messy area of the shop I didn't get to yet. Muscle up. Don't wanna scratch up my black top. So I'm just pull this out. Just want you to see the pain sometimes we go through to make videos rather than show you guys the messy corner or take the time to clean it up i'm just going to carry my drill press over to the table oh. ha, you're too tall good thing this table moves project that won't end because it's a project that won't begin. That just goes to show some of the problems that happen in real life. The crank handle on my drill press, the, what is that, set screw came out and the actual metal bushing inside twisted or something with the plastic handle. So I had to fight finagle, get them back in line and get the set screw back in place so that I could put it on my handle and actually raise the table of drill press. So, yep. Hashtag life. <laughs> I'm tightening in a one inch Forstner bit. This will allow me to drill the hole all the way through the piece and give a nice clean cut. You don't have to use a Forstner bit for this, but it's one of my favorite type because it gives very, very clean edges and doesn't usually tear out a lot. That being said, I'm gonna put a sacrificial board below this because the tear out, if it's gonna happen, will happen on the underside within your drilling holes. Gonna put that piece underneath it. Clamp it in place so it's just one less thing I have to deal with or think about moving around. And now we can finally drill the holes.
I never get tired of seeing the wood shavings come off the drill press with the Forstner bit. Especially with the soft wood, they curl and look very nice. I have here a 38 and a half inch long 2x3 with 1 inch diameter holes drilled in it, spaced evenly to give myself 8 holes. I don't know how many times I've said it at this point, 8 holes, 4 pairs of boots, but I feel like I'm just repeating myself. The holes being done is fun. With the holes done, the next thing for me to do is honestly give this thing a good sand over. The other 2x4, sand it as well. The dowels, touch up the edges, but otherwise prepare these pieces for paint and the dowels for a clear finish to be applied. This is going to be an outdoor project, so I need to make sure I protect the wood. I have some exterior grade white paint, and then I'll also apply probably lacquer to the walnut dowels. That way they're protected, but also retain the beautiful color of the dark wood. I think that, along with the white, will look very nice. Sanding is all done, and that was a blast. <laughs> Not really, but anyway, it has to be done. Now I'm ready to paint, and for the paint I'm using, this is an exterior acrylic paint. This is Valspar name brand. It is a semi-gloss pure white. It should brush on pretty easily, hopefully not take too long, and if I'm lucky, I'll be able to get two coats in tonight and then leave it to cure overnight. I'm at the point to let this paint dry overnight. I was able to get mm, barely two coats. I mean, it's probably more like one and a half coats of paint. So I'm gonna let it stay here in the workshop. I have my heater running. I'll leave it on tonight and let this thing cure up, dry up. and see you guys tomorrow when we can maybe add some more paint, but definitely assemble this thing and put it up on the back deck tomorrow. I sure hope so. It is now the next day and I've actually spent the past couple hours out here today putting on two more coats of paint and waiting for it to dry. These pieces are totally painted. They are ready for assembly now. The first step is to take my 2x3 with the holes in it, my 12 inch long dowels, hammer them all the way through. Once that's done, I'll then turn this and attach it to the 2x4 using 3 inch long screws. Since I am dealing with some painted pieces, I'm going to be using some Gorilla Clear Glue. This is a polyurethane style glue. It's going to work great to hold everything together. These dowels are going to fit in the holes probably purely by friction fit. That would probably be good enough. 
but I am going to add some glue as I hammer them down into place just for a little extra insurance and make sure they don't go anywhere over time. As far as attaching the 2x3 to the 2x4, I'm going to be using screws and I'll talk a little bit more about why I'm using screws, not glue for that portion, as well as why I decided to drill all the way through the 2x3 with the dowels once I get this thing assembled. As promised, I want to talk to you for just a second about my design choices. First and foremost, why did I drill all the way through the 2x3? Why didn't I drill halfway and stop? I did that because I know this is an outdoor project. Try as I might with sealants, protectants, and paints, water will make its way into the joints. My thought process is, if this goes all the way through the 2x3, the water can go through and eventually go on out the bottom. It's not going to reach the bottom of that pocket, sit, and rot everything out. The other thing to consider that you may be wondering is why did I paint all of this 2x3 and 2x4 when I'm getting ready to put them together? Why don't I glue it? Why didn't I leave it blank? The same thought process applies there. I wanted to paint this entire 2x3 all the way around to protect it from moisture, rot, mildew, and other problems. And I'm going to attach it to the 2x4 with purely mechanical fasteners. That will allow any water that does get between the 2x4 and 2x3 to not affect the wood as much as if it was bare wood. And it should possibly allow the water to go on out the bottom as well. Again, these are just my thoughts, just my reasonings. I know this is proven by science. As far as I know, it's just me and the reasons why I did things the way I did. The next step is to take our 2x4, slap it up here on the back side, and attach it with some 3 inch long screws. And after that, we are ready to give this whole thing a coat of spray lacquer, primarily to protect and seal the walnut dowels, but also add some protection to the paint. And then after that, we can take it to the deck and actually put it into place. That is done. We are ready to get tools together. Go get Ange out of the soap shed, take it over, and install this thing. I'm excited. She has not seen this since just components. She's not seen the finished look, and it looks pretty nice just from spraying that lacquer. I think she's going to be very happy. But let's go get her and see what she thinks too. Oakley Doakley, uh, pretend like you haven't already seen this as we carried it over. But here we have the boot rack. It looks very nice. I'm gonna step up this back deck, I tell you that much right now. Muddy Boots never had it so nice. Now I would have to say the reason that it is painted and not just natural like everything else is because it is not treated. Oh, they know this. Oh. Okay. I've talked their heads off about this, that, and the others. Oh, they, okay. They've had a full, I don't know, 
boot rackology lecture <laughs> if they're still here they know okay but good job covering all the bases it's pretty i really like the walnut look i so. do too all right well, let's go ahead and mount this thing throw some boots on it boots well you didn't pre-drill no i didn't pre-drill okay step on in here good question i was like this close to pre-drilling i have my measurements i did measure the balusters but i'm like you know what don't ruin it at the last second <laughs> Bring your tools and do it on site. Good job. Yeah. Are you going to do it from the outside in? So you don't see the fasteners from the front? Mm hmm Do you want me to? Sure. Okay, it just got complicated. <laughs> of course it did. I'm attaching this to every single one of these balusters because we have two feral kids and as much as we would tell them not to they will probably try and stand on this so hopefully this will keep them from breaking it I gotta say that looks pretty good it does and they are up off the floor no more mud pile <laughs> yeah they shouldn't fill with rainwater probably shouldn't get too many bugs throughout the seasons i mean we really only use these large rubber boots during the winter and early spring when it's a season of mud otherwise i mean we don't, we don't need them that much yeah we're pretty lucky out here with our property and the way it is i think for a project using materials we had on hand it turned out really good it holds the four pairs of boots that we needed at minimum. It's not as many as we were hoping, but it does fit the space good too. It does. And there's only four of us, so that should be fine. <laughs> there you go. If your boots are there, it's, you know, yeah. I don't want to say about that. Big families need a big rack, but we, we're good. Well, guys, thanks for coming along as mainly Sam built what we talked about. You were the inspiration driver. <laughs> if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next time on the homestead. See you guys. Bye.